This video is part of Project Dictator, a multi-channel collaboration of YouTube historians. Playlist link is in the description and in the card in the top right of the screen. Enjoy! Hello and welcome back to another video, my name is Jake the Genealogist, and in today's video I'll be going over the family tree of the infamous dictator Mao Zedong. Now if you're new to my channel, then welcome! I make various family trees of some of the more obscure royal dynasties and people in history. So let's jump in with his family history. So, Mao Zedong was born on the 26th of December in 1893 in Shaoshan, then part of the Hunan province of the then weakening Qing dynasty in China. And his parents were Mao Yinchang and Wen Qimei. Now, Yinchang descended from a pretty long dynasty of the Mao family, supposedly stretching all the way back to the 14th century with a Mao Taihua who allegedly helped the Hongwu Emperor in rebelling against the Yuan Dynasty to form the Ming Dynasty. Now, Mao Yinchang had two sisters uh, not depicted, Zhang Mao and Hei Mao, and his father, Mao and Pu, had a brother, Mao and Nong, who in turn had three sons, Mao Yinchang, Mao Yifu, and Mao Yijing. Yijing's daughter, Mao Zizhen, becomes pretty important later. Now, Mao is the eldest of three siblings, the other two being Mao Zemin, born in 1896, and Mao Zetan, born in 1905. And he also had an adopted sister, the previously mentioned Mao Zhejian, born also in 1905. Unfortunately, all of these siblings met pretty cruel ends at the hands of the Kuomintang, and they certainly influenced Mao's radicalism in fighting them during the Chinese Civil War. Mao Zemin was executed in 1943 by the tyrannical military governor of Xinjiang, Shen Shikai. Mao Zedong was captured fighting the Kuomintang during the Long March in 1935 and executed. And Mao Zedong was captured in 1929 with her husband and infant child and was tortured and executed. Now, Mao married four times in his lifetime. His first wife, Luo Yishu, was an arranged marriage in 1906, yes, at 13 years old. And Mao never liked the idea of arranged marriages and immediately disavowed her as his wife and she only died four years later at 21 with no children. Now, his second wife was Yang Kaihui, married in 1920 of his own volition, as his parents were both dead at that point. And she worked in helping her husband with his Hunan report, organizing peasant movements across China and leading the fight underground against the Kuomintang. She also bore him three children, Mao Anying, born in 1922, Mao Anqing, born in 1924, and Mao Anlong, born in 1927. And she was eventually captured along with her children. And, like the true patriot she was, when asked whether she wanted to renounce the Communist Party of China, she refused, and they beheaded her, orphaning Mao's children until they were found many years later. Now, his third wife was He Zizhen, a badass shooter and fighter with the nickname Two-Gun General Girl, and he married her in 1928. Yes, he committed bigamy and cheated on Yang Taihui while she was still alive. Now, He Zizhen had six children with Mao, three daughters and three sons, all but a daughter, Li Min, Born in 1936, disappeared or died young. However, another daughter, Mao Jinhua, born in 1929, reportedly took the name Yang Yuehua and is still alive to this day. Now, Mao and He Zizhen divorced in 1937 uh, when he met his next wife. She was allegedly sent to a mental asylum in Moscow, but she came back to Shanghai, dying there in 1984, outliving her ex-husband, actually. Now, Mao's fourth wife, married in 1938, was Zhang Qing, a former actor and former wife of Huang Jing, another communist revolutionary, and also former wife of film actor Tang Na. It's worth mentioning, she never actually divorced either of these two fellows. Lots of bigamy in this family. Anyways, Madame Mao became Mao's most well-known wife, and his last wife, and she helped her husband by serving as his secretary, working in propaganda, and overall advancing Mao's cult of personality in his great leap forward. In the end, because Mao was ultimately responsible for upwards of 65 million deaths in China, she too was given some of the blame, as she was part of the Gang of Four. Now, when Hua Guofeng, Mao's successor, came into power, she was arrested and later given life imprisonment. And after being released, for throat cancer in 1991, she committed suicide by hanging. Two wives, three siblings met ugly deaths. Tough scene. 
And she ultimately bore Mao one daughter, Li Na, born in 1940, who actually wasn't estranged from her father growing up. So, going over his surviving children more in depth. So, Mao and Ying, as previously mentioned, the uh, son of Yang Kaihui, after ending up homeless on the streets, went to study in Moscow. And he actually persuaded Stalin to let him and his brother Mao and Qing serve in the Red Army during World War II. And they served on the Eastern Front in Poland and even in the ultimate Battle of Berlin. And after returning back to China, he reunited with his father and uh, surreptitiously rose to the rank of Major General. Funny how those things happen. Now, during his service in North Korea in 1950, he was killed by a napalm bomb raid during a U.S. reconnaissance mission. The funny thing to me, apparently, the story goes... He forgot breakfast the morning of his death, and he stole eggs from the general to cook egg fried rice in broad daylight, alerting the Americans and ultimately contributing to his death. Some Chinese people to this day that oppose Mao still post pictures of egg fried rice right on the internet, and they get taken down pretty quickly by the government, if you can imagine. Like Mussolini and Stalin, he's the one dictator's son that could promptly ignore Bailar Favre and left to die in battle. Now, Mao and Qing, after serving in World War II with his older brother, began experiencing bouts of schizophrenia, and he spent a lot of his life in mental wars. He also became a Russian linguist, though, translating and writing books, mostly keeping to himself, um, and he died in 2007 at the age of 82. He did marry and have a son, too. His wife, Xiao Hua, was a major general in the army, and his son, Mao Chin Yu, also became one, too something that Chinese people have endlessly mocked him for. Despite this, he does have some wise things to say. He acknowledges that his grandfather shouldn't be venerated as an almighty Chinese savior, and more as just a person, albeit one that, you know, killed millions of people. With his second wife, Liu Bin, Mao Xinyu has two kids of his own, Mao Dong Dong and Mao Tianyu, both of whom are now teenagers. Now, the next child, Mao Anlong, died at three or four from dysentery, so moving on. Um, now, Yang Yuehua, like I mentioned, was abandoned as a young child and adopted by a family with a surname Yang instead, uh, changing her name. Now, she never met her biological parents. Apparently, Mao's fourth wife forbade it. But she did meet her uncle, He Minshui, who confirmed that it was her. Moving on, uh, Mao and Hong died presumably when he was left in the hands of Mao Zetan and his wife, He Yi, while Mao had to travel all over China. And they promptly gave him to a random house in Ruijin, and Zetan was later killed in battle. Mao and Hong disappeared from there. It's actually been suggested that he got adopted and became Zhu Daolai due to some correspondence between He Zhizhen and the supposed adopted parents, but nothing's really confirmed. This man died in 1971 in Nanjing from liver cancer childless, so we have no further leads. Moving along, Li Min was the first child of Mao's that, you know, didn't disappear or die young. And she was born, actually, Mao Zhao Zhao, but her father used a pseudonym, Li De Sheng, to avoid any suspicion of familial ties during the Civil War, so she changed her name as well, and kept it that way. Um, now, she attended Beijing Normal University, pretty strange name, and she studied chemistry, and, uh, Later, she went on to marry Kong Linghua in 1959 and went on to have two children, Kong Jining and Kong Dongmei. She's still alive at 85 or 86 years old. Kong Jinin, as well as his sister, um, are both business entrepreneurs, and Kong Dongmei, in fact, is estimated to be one of the 500 richest people in China today, with an estimated net worth of 815 million. For the next child, uh, well, He Zhizhen was getting medical treatment in Moscow after, you know, Mao just kind of dumped her over there. She gave birth to another daughter who she gave a Russian name, Alyova. Unfortunately, she died as an infant. Now, the last child of Mao was his daughter, Li Na. And she was a pretty excellent student and went on to Peking University, majoring in history. Hey! Unfortunately, she also supported most of her father's affairs, particularly during the egregious Cultural Revolution. Not yay. She married twice, the first of which ended in divorce, and her second husband passed away just last year. And she had one son, Zhu Zhaoning, who changed his name to Wang Zhaojai. And he lives pretty low-key, not wanting to mention who his grandfather is. 
Now, Mao had three nieces and nephews as well as his children. Mao Chu Xiang, son of Mao Zedong, faced a bad death just like his father. He mysteriously disappeared at age 19 in 1946, and it is thought that he was buried alive by the orders of Hu Zongnan. Mao Zemin's son, Mao Yuanxin, worked very closely with Mao, especially in his last years. And particularly because of this, he was convicted along with the Gang of Four who held influence over the Cultural Revolution. And he was sentenced to Qinsheng Prison for 17 years. After that, when he got released, he changed his name and basically disappeared for public life. And he has one daughter, Li Li, who is deaf. And now, finally to get into Mao's family story. So, now that I've gone over Mao's family, you might start to actually feel a little sorry for the guy. There were certainly lots of family tragedies, especially involving the Kuomintang. But really, who was ultimately in the right? Let's see if your feelings change after hearing his much abbreviated life story. Now, growing up, Mao had a pretty interesting life. His father was a rather unreligious disciplinarian who always wanted his son to do manual labor over his reading and educating himself. Things that he genuinely enjoyed to do. And though his father started out as a peasant, he quickly became a relatively successful landowner. His mother on the flip side, though, was very religious, and she instilled Mao with a lot of Buddhist and Confucianist values, though he later rejected these as a teenager. Now, through reading, he gained respect for lots of world leaders throughout history, like Alexander the Great, Napoleon, Genghis Khan, ones who established their dominance militarily and or nationalistically. And while in school in Qing Xia, many in the city were calling for republicanism and an end to the traditional Qing monarchy. So, as a soldier in 1912, Mao helped Sun Yat-sen and his army put an end to the thousands of year old monarchy to pave way for the new Chinese Republic. Now, after leaving the army quite quickly, he became forever enveloped in reading Western classical literature. And as 1917 and the Russian Revolution loomed, Mao became pretty enveloped in anarchist and later Marxist books. Now, later in 1919 and 1920, though he protested the Chinese government's inaction, he didn't actually bring his Marxist views in. They would come in later. So just a year after that, he joined China's fledgling Communist Party, taking a very left-wing anti-imperialist viewpoint. And surprisingly, he even collaborated with the Kuomintang during those following years. Unfortunately, though, for Mao, things would take a turn for the worst. Sun Yat-sen died in 1925, and who was his successor? None other than good old Chiang Kai-shek. And then, like Sun, Sheng seeks to eliminate any possible threats to stability, and he essentially put down every other group not named the Kuomintang. So began the Chinese Civil War, and I could talk about this part of Mao's life for ages and ages, but I'll just go over the really important bits. So, for the first part of the war, the communists got their butts kicked. The Kuomintang nationalists dominated because they were basically the government at the time, and the communists really lacked a lot of organization. At this point, Mao wasn't really much of a person in the party, he was just another guy. The communists were even forced into retreating, leading to the long march of 1934 to 1935. And because of this march and Mao's heroism in leading it in the eyes of the rest of the army, he essentially became the undisputed leader of the party from then on out. Now, after this, the Second Sino-Japanese War broke out in 1935, and because of this, the nationalists and commies agreed to help set aside their differences for the time being to help defend China against Japan. However, this crumbled only several years later, in 1940, as the Civil War resumed. Only, this time, communists actually got the upper hand. Their decisive five-month siege against the nationalists in 1948 at Changshun, which is a massacre unto itself, whole other story, defeated them. And the Republic of China's leaders were all exiled to Taiwan and were killed. And Mao proclaimed himself supreme leader of the People's Republic of China in October 1949. So, now Mao was in charge of China. He put forward a treaty with the Soviet Union as one of his first things, acknowledging a tenuous alliance. He also even supported the North Korean troops during the Korean War, resulting in the West, namely the US, cutting them off from trade. Then he really got to work converting the country to a communist-based economy. 
He started by introducing the land reform movement, basically killing any landowners and wealthy peasants and giving it to the poor. It's like Robin Hood, but on a genocidal scale, with some estimates ranging from the thousands to the millions in casualties. He also attempted to rid China of the few remaining Kuomintang officials and those with strong connections. He also even purged the government and wealthy civilians by his free anti and five anti campaigns. A good many of these enemies of the people were sent through Laogai, also known as Reform for Labor Camps. Now, continuing his reforms, he launched his first of many five-year plans in 1953, just like the USSR's model. But the next five-year plan, also known as the Great Leap Forward, would become even more significant. In the Great Leap Forward, he stated that he wanted to significantly increase grain production to really convert to an agrarian-based society with shared commune farming. However, put simply, the officials who were in charge of uh, the quotas for the grain, scared of his rightist purges, decided the best thing to do would, would be to actually exaggerate how much grain they were producing to meet or exceed the quotas, even going as far as to take their share of the peasants' food. What happened next? Only arguably the biggest famine in human history. The Great Chinese Famine killed somewhere from 15 to 55 million people at its largest estimate. Some Orthodox historians say Mao was unaware of the events as they were transpiring, but some other more recent ones say he knew of all of the events all along, and only stepped in when the devastation was causing people to take arms against him. For the most part, it's pretty hard to argue that Mao wasn't responsible for these millions of deaths, regardless of his knowledge of it, though. As a result, in 1962, the Great Leap Forward was called off, and quite deservedly, Mao got a lot of crap for his decision-making. For a short while, his influence actually declined, but he would get his footing back relatively quickly. In the meanwhile, back to business. At the same time as all this horrible famine, China's foreign policy was shifting. The Sino-Soviet split between 56 and 66, marked by the less paranoid and crazy Nikita Khrushchev coming into power in the USSR, was a really big point in the ongoing Cold War, as it marked the start of the short-lived thaw, when the Soviets were less hostile to the Western world. It also meant that China, for the time being, wasn't left with too many powerful allies. Shifting, though, back to domestic politics, Mao, after the Great Leap Forward, became increasingly convinced that a cultural revolution was needed to scare the elites into, you know, not being capitalist, and keeping the country perpetually in a state of communist revolution. Great idea. What he did is he basically incited violence against his own government and used the youth movements in the country to rebel. This had the adverse effect, though, of causing mass riots, massacres, and purges. Again, right after millions dying during a famine, Mao decides the best thing to do is to incite violence all over the country. Great idea. Upwards of hundreds of thousands more deaths have been estimated from this revolution. It lasted officially until 1969, but many believe it really only ended after Mao's death. Speaking of which, we get to wrap this thing up. Now, Mao was a big smoker, and he was also reported to have Parkinson's and Lou Gehrig's diseases in old age. He had several heart attacks in 1976, one of which culminated in his death on the 9th of September. A massive funeral was held, and his body is now preserved, just like Lenin, in the Mao Zedong mausoleum that you can visit if you're into that weird stuff. Now, Mao's legacy nowadays is highly controversial. Nobody can quite reach a consensus on him. On the one hand, he finally united China after decades of conflict and being kicked around by imperialist powers. He also rid it of that imperialism and transformed it into the world's superpower it is today. On the other hand, though, his tactics to get there were brutal, and that's a massive understatement. Many historians believe his death count was up to 78 million. To put that in context, that's about twice Hitler and Stalin's high death counts combined. Anyways, I hope you've enjoyed watching this video and learned a little bit about this dictator. And if you're new here, like I said, be sure to check out some more videos on my channel. I made one of Stalin's family tree, too. And be sure, once again, to check out the Project Dictator playlist in the card in the description. See ya!